and I'm going to do a demo. I'm calling uh, gyroscopes. I'm going to talk about the rotation of the gyroscope, the precession of a gyroscope, and the mutation of a gyroscope. So this is an important concept in physics and also applies very importantly to astronomy and the uh, rotation of the Earth, precession of the Earth, and the mutation of the Earth. So when we have a gyroscope, we can spin it, give it a uh, rotation. So you can see here, this one is the rotational frequency. The faster I spin it, I increase the rotational frequency, right? Now, besides uh, gyroscope uh, rotating, it's also going to experience what we call precession. You see how it's going this way? It's precessing. That's called the precessional frequency, right? So this equation tells us the precessional frequency depends on the mass that I put here, the m, right, times gravity, times r, the, the, the r is the distance between the mass and the axis of rotation. In other words, this mass is causing a torque on the system, and uh, because it's causing a torque, the torque is equal to its uh, mass times gravity times its distance from the, uh, the pivot point, right? So that's gonna be the torque due to that mass. The further out, the further, the, the heavier that mass is, and the further out I put this, the further out I put the mass, that's gonna increase the, the precessional frequency. It's gonna precess faster, right? And then I divide that by the moment of inertia of the shape, the moment of inertia of this object, which depends on its mass and its radius. That's the moment of inertia. And this is the rotational frequency. So if I give it a very uh, slow spin, if the rotational frequency is small, that will tend to make the precession faster, right? So let's see uh, if the behavior of this is, uh, good, uh, is uh, correct based on the equation. So the way it works is that you have to kind of start out with the horizontal, right, in the horizontal setting, and then spin it, and then let this apply a torque on the system, right? So I'm going to spin it slowly. So this is the rotational frequency I'm giving it, right? Spin it, and it's going to fall. And you see how precessing is very fast? So the precession is fast right here. Okay, so if this is slow, the rotational frequency, the precession frequency is going to be high, right? So now what if I spin it quick? If I spin it quick, oh, let me do it faster, harder, then let it drop, okay? It's precessing, but not as fast, right? It's moving around, but not as fast. So if this is high, then the precessional frequency is low, okay? So let's do that again, slow, drop, going around. And then in a laboratory setting, we would measure the time that it's taking to go around. And then if you do fast, it should precess slower, right? The other things I can change in this is I can change the R, right? I can change the R. I can bring this weight in a little bit closer. So what should happen? If I decrease the R, I'm decreasing the amount of torque. If I decrease the R, I'm decreasing the torque, the precessional frequency should go down. That means it shouldn't precess as fast, right? So I brought this in a little bit. Let's go slow. Okay, the precession is not as fast as before. You can see? So I did slow. Now what if I do fast? Rotate it fast. Okay, now it's doing something else that's kind of noticeable now. Not only is it precessing, but it's bobbing up and down. That's called mutation, right? Mutation. So the mutation frequency depends on the rotation frequency, right? So if I spin it fast, what's going to happen? Its, it's mutation frequency is more noticeable. It's faster, right? So look at that. You see, that's called mutation. It's going up and down, and it's precessing. You see? So when I did it slowly, when, I, when the rotational frequency was slow, it kind of dropped down, and the mutation is not that noticeable. And it takes a long time for it to mutate, right? So when this is low, the mutation frequency is low, 
that means it takes a long time to mutate and it's not noticeable, right? So if you want this, to, if this is high, this is going to be high and it's going to be more noticeable. For the Earth, for example, the Earth precession frequency once every 26,000 years. 26,000 years. So for the Earth, uh, the precessional frequency is not noticeable in our lifetime. The Earth takes 26,000 years to go around, so it's very slow. Why is that? The rotational uh, 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 frequency of the Earth, once every 24 hours, it's not the fastest rotating planet, and it's not a very slow rotating planet either. It's on the average. The rotational frequency of the Earth is the average. But the moment of inertia of the Earth is very big, right, and then the the, the, the thing that's causing the Earth to precess is not a certain weight like that, but it's the torque due to the weight of the Sun and the Moon, right? So the weight of the Sun, the, the force of the Sun and the Moon cause an imbalance and cause a torque on the, uh, the, the Earth's uh, motion. And then the torque is due to the, uh, the force of the Sun and the Moon, and the torque is very low, right? So since this is low and this is high, the precessional frequency of the uh, Earth is very small number. So it takes one cycle of rotation like this, it takes 26,000 years for the Earth to precess, right? So, but the Earth also mutates, de depending on the rate of uh, uh, frequency of the rotation, right? The Earth also mutates, right? And uh, again, like I said, since the rotation rate is not too fast, not too uh, slow, right? The mutation of the Earth is not that noticeable, right? It's, on, it's in the middle. So the, what is that going to do? The mutation of the Earth is going to cause the tilt of the Earth to change. We learn in astronomy that the tilt of the Earth is 23 and a half degrees. But that tilt of the Earth changes once every, the mutation period is uh, uh, 18, about 18 years. Mutation period every uh, 18 years. The precession is every 26,000 years, but the mutation is every 18 years. Well, what's going to happen? The tilt of the Earth is not going to stay 23 and a half degrees. It's going to go up by about nine arc seconds, and it's going to go down by nine arc seconds. So you write it like this, nine arc seconds. But is that noticeable? Is that going to, is that going to change the seasons much? Not at all, right? Nine arc seconds is nine, uh, is nine, 3,600 of a degree, right? One arc second is 1 60th of an arc minute, and one arc minute is 1 60th of an arc second. So nine arc seconds is what portion of a degree? Nine, 3,600 of a degree, right? It's kind of like saying, uh, what is nine seconds in terms of hours? Well, nine seconds is nine over 3,600 hours. So nine arc seconds, is very significant when you compare it to a degree. So 9, 3,600, what is that going to be? Well, what does that mean? That means the tilt of the Earth is not going to stay consistent. The tilt of the Earth during the 18-year mutation period, the tilt of the Earth can be as large as, add 0 0.0025 degrees to this, 23.5025 degrees. And then subtract 0 0.0025 from 23 and a half from five. So the, the angle of the Earth's tilt can get as large as 23.5025 and as little as 23.4975. Is that gonna affect our lives a lot? No, the seasons aren't gonna change too much. Very slight mutation. So the Earth is not mutating as noticeably as the gyroscope that you saw here. See, this one. You see, the mutation is very noticeable here. The mutation of the Earth is more like this. Let's put the weight a little bit farther out, right? And then let's spin it kind of slowly, right? Because if, the, if I spin slowly, the mutation is going to be uh, less noticeable and the frequency is going to be low, right? So I'm going to go slow, okay? So now the Earth mutation will be more like this. It's mutating up and down, but not noticeably, right? Very, very slightly. I can't even tell with my bare eyes that it is mutating, but it is kind of somewhat mutating like that. 
And then the precession is noticeable, but the precession of the Earth is very slow. It takes every 26,000 years, okay? So now you know a little bit about rotation, precession, nutation, and you can see a good live demonstration of this. And then this uh, setup can be used to perform more detailed calculations, more detailed analysis of all of these equations, okay? Thank you very much.